what is going on guys? It is your boy Seso here because a video here today bringing guys a Photoshop slash After Effects story today. Check out make your own really cool sort of live now graphic if you guys haven't seen these around yet and or don't know. It's basically a really cool way to kind of amp up your whole little stream kind of you just start, besides just tweeting out I'm going live and just leaking your portfolio or your portfolio, leaking your uh you know your Twitch or whatever, your YouTube, or whatever you're doing your live streams on. Um this is a really cool way to kind of interact and get that really cool sort of branding sort of quality up there, as well as for the designers as well to go ahead and like learn how to do this because it's kind of really simple and you can put this inside your stream packages and make them really really cool and uh you know i guess you say more valuable in a way right make yourself more valuable so <laughs> we're gonna be going into photoshop and doing this little photoshop thing and moving it into after effects is a little more easier for me personally just to design inside photoshop and then move it into after effects because it's very simple to do so um with that being said, that the overall design and very little cool aspect of it is actually pretty nice, and I like how it looks, very aesthetic in a way. And uh, with that being said, we're almost, I think, by the time I upload this video, we're going to be at 99,000 subscribers. <laughs> Dude, we're 1K away. We're really, we're literally 1K away. I have no idea but what I'm going to do. I just have no idea what I'm doing, basically. But I, all I'm going to say is it's going to be really cool. Hopefully, if it's not, I don't really, whoops. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to be, so, I don't, I'm so good, by the way, today. I apologize. It's probably going to be during the video. I'm just a weirdo sometimes, but... With that being said, two likes on the video, you can stick it out below. Um, as always, guys, I have no idea what I'm going to be putting in there. I don't know if you guys want project files, because you guys won't be able to really use my project files. Um, so I'll figure something out for you guys. Maybe like have like a sort of cool little pack of just like sort of things you could put in your typography or whatnot or something like that of some sort like that. I have no idea yet. But hope you guys understand and hope you guys get this thing going. Let's just go ahead and just jump right into it. And uh, yeah. All right, homies. So to get this thing started, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys really quickly the dimensions I'm going to be using in today's video. Now, I believe these make... I believe this is probably like a little more important for you guys if you guys don't know I don't want you guys to go throughout the entire video do everything and whatnot and all of a sudden your file is too big and or cannot be rendered out um, you have to lower you have to lower your quality through the render process and that's really really crap because it's honestly unfortunate it doesn't look as good all that crazy stuff so what I'm basically been doing I'm gonna go to file new I'm gonna be using uh, 1920 by 1080 right I'm gonna use my resolution uh, 72 when I have this up what I'm basically going to do is press C on my keyboard, and that's the crop tool. I'm going to literally just take the corner here, hold Alt and Shift, just make it a little more smaller. Um, honestly, you can probably do this in post as well, just like putting in like 1500 by like 840 or something like that. Um, but honestly, if you guys want to choose to do something like this, make it a little more smaller, then say, hey, I want it to be a little bit more smaller when it comes to sort of like the uh, the dimensions of like, you know, squeezing the, the height a little bit more. You can hold Control, I mean Alt, excuse me, click the top. And then move these in a little bit and that's basically how i got like what i have right here just a little bit more of a smaller sort of dimension and kind of like it gives you more big of a reference of how much space you might need because of course you might work in 1920 by 1080 a lot um however i just think this is how i want like would make sure you guys are make sure you're like below like 1500 like i said like let's say let me just do this for you guys right usually at 1920 by 1080 right i'll say like 1500 by like 845 can be your starting point right and then figure that out from there so with that being said, <laughs> let's close this down. Let's open this up or close that down as well. So the starting color I'm using in today's video is this blue, this dark blue sort of navy. This hex code is 030710. Now, if you guys want to go ahead and change up the color scheme, obviously that's just up to you and uh, obviously not going to be using the same thing I'm going to be using. But with that being said as well, I got to get my logo really quickly. If you don't mind, just grab that right there. Um, Cool. So I have my logo here. So, so HQ. And basically, to start this thing off, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I do, like, you can't really tell, but uh, if you're not really, like, a designer savvy kind of person, but this spot's a little bit darker here, this spot's a little bit lighter here, that's because we have one big brush hit right in the middle, and that's going to make us look a little more cooler and kind of, like, have that nice little quality tone to it, so I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. Okay, now we're starting to design, make a new layer, I'm gonna hide this really quickly. So, new layer, we're going to go ahead and press B on our keyboard for the brush, we're going to make sure we use a soft brush here right zero hardness and i'm gonna hold control i mean excuse me i'm gonna hold alt right click and i'm gonna go ahead and move uh right to make my diameter bigger i'm gonna make it fairly big as a canvas and make sure my foreground color is on white press ok and i'm just gonna simply click one time in the middle and if it's a little bit too big i'll say hey let's make it a little more smaller a little more a little bigger i would say right about there okay so now all i gotta do is go to uh, my blend mode and go to normal and change it to overlay and we have this nice little sort of like kind of like blue starting off background i can throw on my logo now so <laughs> with this here, I'm going to go ahead and kind of just type in the the, te the text I'm going to be having to use. So, of course, I have twitch.tv slash this and that's a real thing, by the way. I hardly ever stream on it, honestly. Um, my streaming schedule is like, like, like non-existent right now. Um, Control-T. I'm going to go ahead, by the way. What I'd like to do, like, uh, recently at least, I was right-click on the actual text and skew it. Make sure you guys click on the middle. 
and then move it over to the right. Kind of gives you a nice little skew to it, uh, even though the actual font itself doesn't have an italicized version of it. So I'm going to have this, I'm going to have the words live now in a different font. And the font I'm using for this one is called Glory Knight. And the other one I was using was Kaluna. So Glory Knight here. And I'm going to go ahead and say make some more bigger. Just like that. I'm going to put that right here. And on the top side for like a little subtext says come hang out with me or something like that, right? Desperate, a little desperate, but <laughs> that's a little bit desperate. But hey, whatever works, we're going to go like 30 and like 22. Okay, and then like separate this a little bit with the VA. Now, if you guys want to have this table here, the characters table, just go to your windows, choose character, and you guys will pop up this little table right here. This is basically what I use all the time when I'm messing around with text. Um, I'm going to say not come hang out with me, but come hang out period that was that's a little bit more non-desperate and is hangout one word i have no idea uh i think i put it one word this last time didn't i no i didn't okay not an idiot whatever all right so now that i have this little sort of like typography si uh, bit set up now be mindful right i have this for me personally is my camera lagging that was weird i have no idea it looks like it was lagging for a second i apologize if it was um go ahead and say like if you guys want to i'll cut I'm, I'm just gonna copy this for a second make this different now if you guys wanted to say hey i don't want to have live now here or i don't want to have my twitch here you can actually have like maybe stack it this way where you have like live on the top you know you have now on the bottom right and maybe you have like now really really big so it'd be like hey i'm emphasizing like i'm going live like right now or you can have it saying going live um we don't have to have any of this sort of stuff here right you can have this stuff here then you can have like your twitch like in a little bit of a corner over here it all depends on how you want to stack it and all that cool stuff. So it really, honestly, all just depends on what you want to do for your actual GIF. Be mindful that, of course, changing up the typography is basically changing up everything in this design because although you might seem it looks like a lot or whatever, it's really not a lot what I'm doing in today's video besides just using like sort of like really simple um, patterns and stuff like that. So it's not too hard whatsoever, but depending on how you guys want to go ahead and set it up, that's just kind of how it is, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, hey, this is pretty good right here i like how this looks so the little aesthetic part of this video here is how i did this part let me see if i can just kind of group this with this in here okay so i can actually just click on it really quickly without having any trouble where is hold on what's the last layer in here that's that this is scuffed as hell what the heck where is this layer what's the last layer in this one it's this cool there we go i'm just gonna take this that way we have one just to re reference to at all times at all points cool so what i want to go ahead and do is make sure i have i have live now in the middle so i'll just kind of put this in the middle but the whole part what i did for the actual little uh gradients and all that cool stuff and now that's also another part that you can change around so i'll start off with how i did the live now part so simply i just went ahead and so you how, how i have it like live now in one simple little text um group i'm just going to go ahead and just hover over the word now make sure i have the exclamation point as well however now exclamation point i'm gonna press Control c right to uh, hover over it and copy it all make a duplicate of it by simply just pressing alt right if we make if you press alt and you just see if i let go now uh you move the layer around it makes a duplicate for you but if i hold alt and shift i can just move it over and i'll make sure it only goes on that sort of like line access right so now i duplicated it right i'm gonna have the word now so now the words live and now are one separate layer or two separate layers excuse me so what I'll do now is I'm going to take my fill, drop it down all the way to zero. What this is basically your opacity, but anything you guys put on the layer itself, including like layer styles, will actually still be visible. So in this case here, I can just use the actual stroke and use my fill type. It's usually on color. You can put it on gradient. And my gradient for this uh, little video here today is like a little tealish, bluish green. I have no idea how you want to say it, but hex code 38C48, uh, 4A6. Okay, that was, that was hard. Um, pink here is D83787. So you guys can choose those two, two different colors. And also I do have it so that my pink here <laughs> is a little bit more like uh, flourish toward the blue or the greenish tone, whatever you want to say is more toward the left hand side. If you guys want to kind of change that around, you just take this midpoint, move this around here. So you can say, hey, I want it to be more in the middle. And I would say, okay, put it in the middle, press okay. And then press okay again. So now that I have this here, you cannot really put on, if I put this on right here, this outer glow, it does not look good. The reason why, um, with these settings I'm going to be using in today's video at least, uh, is because no matter what you do at this point right now, your layer is still saying that there is a full layer that says now in there, right? So just because the fill is gone, if I put the fill back up, you'll see that it's still really there. So what you want to do is you want to go right click on the word now and go to where it says rasterize layer type. 
And what this will do is say, hey, now this layer is only just this stroke. And that way, now if I go ahead and go onto this layer here, go towards this outer glow, and I have my outer glow settings on screen, opacity, I'll just say 60 for the sake of OCD, spread zero, size 95, and also I change it from the, the regular color to the gradient. And the same gradient that we use in today's video, uh, or the one I just showed you guys, is the one I'm using for today's video, excuse me. And I'll press OK. <laughs> so now it looks like your word now it is it's kind of like of course like nice little glowy looking really cool So what I'm gonna do here do the same thing right here Highlight it duplicate it put it back in Double click here go to where it says gradient overlay take it and I'm gonna say hey I want my pink to be a little bit more sort of like this way Also, it's kind of very very what you would call it very vibrant. I want it to be a little more or less vibrant Okay, press okay press okay press okay now we're looking good there. So basically we have that sort of like text part here and it's looking pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now is the last little uh, portion here, which is basically take my logo here and making it sort of like my backing in a way. So I made it really, really big, right? Like pretty big, as big as the canvas, turned a little bit because just for a little, you know, why not? Um, I'm gonna take this, make sure I change it to black. So I can just press Control U on the keyboard, take my lightness, make it black, all the way down to zero, uh, negative 100, all the way to the left basically. Rasterize the layer type just in case you don't have any issues with it. So it's nice, just a nice little black layer of your logo. Um, take your blend mode, change it to overlay. Opacity, we're gonna lower that baby down, right? And I can see it looks pretty, uh, pretty cool and pretty good. I'm gonna take a duplicate of this by simply just holding Alt and making a like clicking the layer itself, holding Alt, dragging it right above. You can see this little blue line being uh, highlighted. Drop it, let it go. As you can see, there's now two layers of the same thing, right? So I have this one that's in the background here, and also have this one right here. So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and end up doing is taking my blend mode, changing it to normal, take my fill, dropping it all the way down to zero. So the same thing as we did before, right? I'm gonna go into my layer styles here. Now, if you guys don't have any patterns, I'm gonna self plug here really quickly. Um, patterns are just kind of like, it has a really cool aesthetic to it. So if you guys wanna choose the ones I have personally, it's like $3 on my self five, which is self com slash seso HQ. So I'm using this pattern right here. And you guys can see it hopefully in the background here, right there. Right, kind of just adds this really cool little depth por uh, portion of it. But once you guys add the pattern to it, you guys want to right click, rasterize the layer type so that way you can kind of say, Hey, we just want the pattern lines to be what is the in the layer, right? If we didn't rasterize it, it would still have my logo be in the layer as well because you just lowered the fill down. You guys remember that when we have we did with the, the word now, basically the same exact thing now, but <laughs> excuse me, it's what the actual fo uh, font with the actual pattern. So I'm gonna make sure I make sure my pattern's color is black. Right there, right? It looks pretty good. Now, hopefully you guys can see it on the video because I already know when I render this thing out, the video is gonna be like really, really dark. And just for the sake of you guys knowing what it looks like, it's basically right on the outside here. Um, yeah. <coughs> um, okay, cool. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and just light la this last part, excuse me, is taking my logo again, right? I'll just take a duplicate of the original uh, main logo, which is this one right here. So I have that right here, right? Control T to free transform. Make it pretty big once again. Right about here for now is pretty good. Okay, what I'm gonna go ahead and end up doing is make sure I uh, throw it right below our main text, which it already is, excuse me, our main uh, logo. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower my fill down once again and do the same exact thing that I did for the word live now, stroke, and I'll put these colors a little more vibrant. Oops. Let's go ahead and make sure these are the vibrant colors. It's pretty good. Now, if you guys want to make your stroke size a little bit more bigger, you guys can, but I'm going to leave it on one personally. And I'm going to go ahead and say that that is pretty good. And basically, we just use our logo, our, our like our actual branding logo, as like a nice little place um, to, or a nice little method of making our background a nice little cool little background, I guess, right? Like that made sense, right? Okay, so that's basically how I went ahead and made that little portion where we're going to actually throw it into uh, After Effects now. Once I kind of fix that out, oh, that's fine. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that you guys understand the importance of making sure that you don't have anything grouped for one. I have a group personally, just simply because I ended up just grouping it together to not be in my way. But what you wanna do is make sure nothing's in a group, right? I'm gonna take that out of the group. Make sure you guys name everything. So this all is pretty good, right? The word now, you have the word live, Sesso HQ, uh, Twitch. This right here can be like main logo. And the reason why you're naming it because the names actually carry over to After Effects. This right here is the stroke. This right here is, what is this? This is the pattern. So you guys will recognize these names when I throw it into After Effects. This is like Sesso HQ background, right? This logo in the background. 
and then this right here empty layers can be deleted as well and this right here is just a light so i'm going to just simply put a space there so that kind of says like hey don't worry about this layer and once you guys are done you guys are going to have this as your final product obviously 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 you guys can just change whatever you guys want to change put any textures that you guys want to put um but just understand and make sure your textures aren't too high quality in a way i would i wouldn't say use like 4k textures um I mean, unless you do, I mean, it, it really just makes sure your, your your size of your document is not going to be too, too big where you're going to render it out and it's going to be a really big problem for you guys. Um, with that being said, though, this is pretty good. You want to make sure you guys go to file, save as, save your file where it needs to be saved that you can find it in, uh, in After Effects in two seconds afterwards, right? And that's going to be something I'm going to do in a second here is going to go into After Effects, open up my actual file, and we'll get going with the animation part, which is really, really simple, really easy as well. So I'll see you guys in a second right over there. Okay, homies, now we are in After Effects. So basically, to open up your file that you guys just basically saved, you want to go to where it says File. You want to go to where it says Import. Import File. So I'm going to just take it over here. I have it saved. I, I called it Live Now GIF Import. Now you're setting here. This little box is going to come up. You just simply just make sure your import kind is on co um, Composition. Retain Layer Sizes, which will make sure you guys, the composition that you guys had in the beginning stays the same. Also, Editable Layer Styles. You press OK. And you see it right here. You're simply just going to double click on it. Okay? Once you've double click on it, you can now see that it's all right here. All the stuff that you guys named is also all right there as well. So basically what I'm gonna make sure you guys end up doing is right click in this gray area of your timeline, right click and go to where it says composition settings, right? So this right here is gonna make sure you can control your length. If you guys want to, you can mess around with your width, but I wouldn't do that because it's gonna also mess around with the layers, layer, you don't wanna do that honestly. Mess around with your layer and your length and height and all that cool stuff afterwards otherwise a little bit of a troublesome not really if you make it smaller but if you make it bigger you're gonna have to make sure you guys rescale everything i don't because the words now aren't rasterized you know what i mean so make sure you guys uh, understand that but your length my duration here is i'm just gonna put it for two, 12 seconds period on the dot press okay okay so now you guys have to have it 12 seconds you guys will make sure you guys can say hey we make sure it kind of uh, it's gonna basically rotate every 12 seconds okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to where it's going to be like around a second and a half. I'm going to move everything besides my logo over there or besides my background stuff over there. So the pattern, the lines, so it's HQ, all that stuff besides the background is going to be moved over a little bit more to the right. So that way it's kind of all that kind of stuff is out of the way. So all you have now is your background, your original sort of background um, with like your pattern, uh, excuse me, your logo in the background as well. It's also the light here as well. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say around this seconds right here. So I'm going to say around 22 seconds, 25 seconds. I want my logo right here, which is this one, to be in the middle. I'm going to put this in the middle first. We're going to go to where it says transform center in view. Okay. So logo's in the middle. <laughs> so at about maybe, let's say, um, at about this portion, like maybe around here, right before this kind of stuff pops up. Pretend for a second that this all the all the stuff is, doesn't matter. We're just pretending that this is the only layer we're looking at. I want to make sure I want to say that around maybe like one second and a half is where my logo is going to be in this position. So I'm going to move all, all this stuff over again so you don't get confused. Uh, that'll confuse you. Okay. So we have this logo right here, right? I'm making sure I keep, keep it as com completely clear as possible. So one second and a half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my position. This is my key from my position right here. So I'm gonna press P on my keyboard. It'll have the position here, which is like a little timestamp. You just wanna simply click on that right there. So it's gonna say, hey, at this point right here, which is what we wanna have it as, it's gonna be in the middle, all good to go. So at around one second though, I want this to not be in frame at all though. So I'm gonna just take the position. You can really hold shift, click on the layer and just drag it down all the way out of view. Now, what I wanna do now as well, is I'm gonna take this little, you see this little uh, 3D layer box here. You wanna simply click on that where it says the word SESOHQ, which is our layer, by the way. So, if you guys don't know what this is gonna do, for a quick second, I'll go back for a second. If you guys don't know, if I just click on this, right? Click there. If you guys have no idea, let's also make sure when you click on that, you go back to that first keyframe that you made that's saying, hey, I want the position to be right here. What you want to also do is make sure that your orientations are all at zero at that point of view as well. Um, you have to go back. You can also do it later on because all, all you have to do is to change your, uh, your your positions of your X, Y, Z or your orientation in your X and Y back to zero. But for the sake of just knowing, it's going to be at zero at that point as well. But if you guys have no idea what this is right here, this is your 3D layer. And if you guys were to go ahead and kind of mess around with this kind of stuff here, this is how you guys can twist it and rotate it in a more of a 3D camera space. You can have like really cool little fly-ins, which is what we're going to be doing right now in a second here. Having the logo fly in, move over to the left, 
to a lot of space so the actual um twitch uh text and all that cool stuff to be in there uh in your face in like a little bit of a, a second or so afterwards right so position drag this out so what's going to happen here is logo comes in logo is going to just simply fly in very statically very boring so what we want to do is want to say hey i want to take the position right here easy ease this that's not what i meant to do at all oops okay whoops 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 you can't redo can you okay you can can't redo from there okay cool right i want this i want to do is i'm gonna hover over our keyframes here we just made with the position which is simply the simple position that we just did flying out to in right click on it uh keyframe assistance easy ease go to where it says your actual graph editor now if your graph does not look like mine it, it's a possibility that it might not look like mine because if you guys have never used graph editor and or keyframing and easy ease and all that cool stuff you're going to be on default um edit value you want to make sure you're on edit speed graph okay so what you want to do now is you want to take these hover over these two points here these two keyframes that you're going to be seeing on your actual map here is the two keyframes that you guys just easy eased so first uh for sake of just knowing if you were to move this over here what's going to happen is it's going to go really slow then really fast at the end so if i want to show you guys really quickly it'll go really slow then really fast but it's also like kind of like in a very very short amount of time frames so not going to really notice it very easily but what i want to do is want to make sure you just understand that whatever keyframe kind of looks like a longer version or a longer sort of stretch it's going to basically mean you're slowing it down so if you were to go all the way over here right and you want to move this one all the way up you're going to be going really fast and a little more slower but for this sense here i'm going to make sure i just kind of have it so that these two keyframes kind of meet somewhere in the middle just so it looks a little bit more sort of like sophisticated and it's not too static so as you can see now it looks more like fluid and not so kind of like statically boring just moving up so this is what we want to have okay so we have this kind of flying in right here uh at around what tw uh, 25 seconds and at one second here if i just zoom this out you see around one second here logo's flying in now it's there so what i want to do now is i'm gonna say once it gets to here i want to say hey once it gets around like before two seconds or so this is all like kind of like you know off the bat i'm not really having set time frames because of course you're not going to always have set time frames but for this uh, uh session here i want to say my position i'm going to move this over toward the left a little bit oops before i do that let's make sure we keyframe all this stuff again and then we're going to go ahead and say around a frame afterwards if you guys didn't know page up and page down is how you move uh back a frame and ahead of frame so i want to make sure i do is it, it stays in this position here and I'm going to move one keyframe ahead, keyframe all this stuff once again, so that way it stays there no matter what. And then it'll go ahead, and I'll say around two seconds or so, move this over to the left just a little bit. So what's going to happen here is you're going to have up over to the left, right? If you did not make these keyframes here, as you guys saw before, my, my line was curving. And that's because it's saying you're going to basically all do that in one full motion. But having this be a keyframe ahead at the same exact points of being stopped in that middle point, it's going to basically reset and kind of allow you to do a more stagnant um, point to point to point and not just like one whole thing. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys understand that part. So what happens here is up over to the left and leave space for that logo. So I want to make sure when it, go when it goes over to the left, I'm going to move all this stuff here so I can see how much space it needs. So this logo here needs to be a little bit more over here and there we go so now what i can do is say boom boom okay i would say it looks pretty good i would say maybe move this over even one more little frame bit over like so okay i think that's better <clears throat> so what i'm going to end up doing is when this stuff is coming in i want this all to be set at this point right here at two seconds so i kind of said or a little more but before two seconds but all this stuff here, we're gonna make sure we press uh, highlight all these layers, right? So I'm gonna click here, hold shift, highlight all these layers, press P on my keyboard. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna, when I press P on the keyboard, it's gonna uh, show my position keyframe um, shortcut. So I wanna make sure at this point right here, my logo is gonna be stopped at this point. I wanna make sure my text is all gonna be also, excuse me, at this point. So uh, position, just like so, just like move that there. Also, before I do that, I should probably move my stuff in a little bit more right because all my stuff is going to be coming in a little bit later so i'll say right about there so i'm going to move my just i move my layers over a little bit more to the left so that way um it actually gets shown and this is a little more easier so i'm going to do is now press p on the keyboard now click on the position so what's going to happen here is at this point here of stopping the logo all my text is also going to be there so if i want to go ahead and do now is i'm going to take my text and i'm going to go to where it says around here where it's stop in the middle I'm going to simply just click one by one, drag this out, drag that out. I'm going to drag these two things out, 
right? I'm holding shift and moving it over to the left. And I'm gonna drag the word live out because I'm gonna do something different with the word now. So what's gonna happen here is, right, at the beginning, the logo's gonna fly in, <laughs> move over to the left like we know, but before I move over to the left, it's also gonna be caught up with the words Twitch and live now. So what's gonna happen here, I wanna make sure the word now, by the way, comes in a little bit later, but we're gonna do that in a second. But for now, what I'm gonna do, uh, freaking jokes on me, I keep saying the word now while we're working with the word also now. Um, right here, if you guys press you on your keyboards, any of you guys ever keyframe, if you wanna quickly show your keyframes and unhide them, you guys definitely can very easily just by doing so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold, shift on all these layers here, press you on my keyboard to see where all the keyframes are. Highlight all these keyframes, and we wanna make sure we easy ease them. And simply just go to my graph editor, and I'm gonna say, hey, zoom in, highlight all those key, all that, those two points here, move it to the left a little bit, or more to the right a little bit, move it to the left a little bit. There we go, to kind of make it a little more sort of like sophisticated fly in, right? Kind of like nice and quick, boom, boom. Looks pretty good, boom, boom, sweet. So if you guys ever wanted to go ahead and sort of like change your position to where it kind of comes in a little bit later, you guys can just move these keyframes in, it's like, like the word now, you want it to come in a little bit later, kind of just bring out this keyframe out. So I'm gonna say, hey, boom, the word now then comes out. I think I like that, pretty good. So now that this word now is coming in here, I want the word, or excuse me, live is coming in there. I want the word now to show right at this position here. So even though the position is good, we wanna go ahead and make sure that we change our, uh, where it says effects, transition, linear wipe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this and make sure this is at uh, keyframe that transition, right? Uh, transition completion, excuse me. We're gonna go ahead and just change this to 100, right? So it's gonna, the first key is gonna be at 100. So it's gonna basically hide the word now. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit really quickly as well. Zoom in, press U, there we go, right? It's right here and then right around here, I want this to show up at zero. So zero is gonna be showing it, hiding it is gonna be 100. So it's gonna be at zero all this time, all this time, all this time. Then when the word live is kind of like passing by, the word now is also being written out and it looks really, really nice and cool and aesthetic, right? So I'm gonna do it one more time, boom. Word live is now kind of going in. Right now I didn't do this either, where the, uh, the little stroke in the background is being, it's just kind of like popping in there. It's kind of like weird. So what I would do is just simply, uh, let's hide all these keyframes here. The pattern, which is right here, or the line right here. Right here. What I want to do is to kind of like, kind of flow in a little bit. So I'm gonna say right around here, I'm gonna push this pattern line to you know show a little bit sooner. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the same exact thing. Effect, transition, linear wipe. I'll just choose an angle to like kind of wipe it in. You can just kind of like bring this in a little bit. I want it to wipe the opposite way, kind of like this. So it's gonna be at zero and the beginning, right? Keyframe this, or 100 is at the beginning because that's kind of, it's hiding it, right? So I'm gonna say right when this logo kind of starts moving this way, I want this to start showing itself as well. So I'm gonna say, hey, boom. It's kind of showing itself really quickly, boom. Looks really good. It, look, it looks a little more better than kind of just kind of having it um, stagnantly come in, which is kind of boring, or really quickly coming in, right? And it looks really nice. I kind of like how that flows a lot. That looks really good. I'm actually fairly surprised. Um, cool. So all this stuff is basically happening from zero to around two seconds, right? It ends basically at two and a half seconds. And now the reader can kind of read it all the way through, all that cool stuff. Now, for me, for me personally, when it comes to like redoing something or looping something, I like to have things kind of like reset in a way. So I'm gonna end up doing is, after you guys finish all that stuff, group everything together, right? Or excuse me, not everything, everything besides the background that you guys know before, these three first layers here aren't being grouped. So I'm gonna right click, pre-composition. <clears throat> what this is basically doing is basically saying grouping together. So let's say you mess up or whatever, you have to go back. All you have to do is just click on this pre-comp, double click on it, and it opens up what you guys had before. Um, if you guys can't also, if you guys want to be able to see what you're doing as well, you want to have a, a, a transparent background, just click this right here, right? You'll be able to see it again. But also your background is not going to be black. It's just when you go back in over here is you'll see that your background is also in there because it's not actually in the pre-comp, just so you guys know. Um, okay. So with that being said, the pre-comp is now here. What I want to do is I'm going to say around 10 seconds, <clears throat> around 10 seconds, I want to go ahead and just wipe everything, all the text and all the, the patterns away. So as again, effects, we're just using the same exact effects. So it's a little more easier for you guys to understand. There's a lot of different transitions. There's a lot of different things you can also do with like wiggles and stuff like that with like actual, um, what do they call it? Uh, what is the word where you actually add a command? It's called something and I forgot in after effects at least. Um, anyway, we're just gonna be using linear wipe once again. 
and I'm gonna say I want it to wipe in this direction here, let's say, okay? So what you wanna do is make sure, okay? Now this is the make sure, you make sure you keyframe it at zero at around nine seconds or 10 seconds or so, or before it ends, right? Zero, keyframe that. Then you wanna move one frame ahead with just pressing page down. So you can see my little blue line here, I press page down, moves one frame ahead, I want to make sure that I keyframe it again. So I'm pressing U on my keyboard, right? You have one keyframe, keyframe, you have another keyframe right there. This will make sure that you're not just getting rid of everything for the entire time, because if you did not make two keyframes at zero, uh, one uh, frame ahead, it'll basically get rid of it and you're not going to be able to see it throughout the entire 10 seconds, um, which is not what you want to do. So now that it's at zero twice, right? Uh, uh, one keyframe, another keyframe is at zero twice. You can say at the end here, just uh, change it to a nice little zero or 100, excuse me. So zero, zero, 100. So what's gonna happen here is it's gonna come in, fly in. It's gonna be stagnant. If you guys want to, you can switch things out as well, but hey, it'll go away, come back in, right? Now, when it's going away, I want it to go a little more faster. So of course, uh, hover over those keyframes, easy, ease it. And take this one here. I want it to go away a little bit sooner. Can we move, how do you move this? Move this right here. Take the yellow lines, move them in. So now that little uh, go away portion will be a little more quicker. Now one and renders out. Nice, that's really nice and smooth. And then here, boom, it's gonna go away nice and quick. So I like how that looks. It's kind of loops a little more better and a little more sophisticated looking. And so once you guys have this here, the way you wanna render it out is you wanna go to composition, add to render queue. <laughs> Your best settings are gonna be say is uh, the same, but output right here is gonna be on format. You can either use QuickTime. It really does not matter as I'm finding out in the uh, in my in my times of doing this a lot. QuickTime works perfectly well as well in, in Photoshop at least, but everyone's not gonna have Quick uh, QuickTime. But PNG sequence is the one I'm gonna be using because that's the one everyone can definitely use. Uh, PNG sequence. Make sure your channels, if there are any transparencies, um, you wanna put RGB plus alpha. If it's not, you can just keep it on RGB. But when I've learned about Twitter's new sort of compression rate, they're not actually any more transparent um, GIFs. They all have white background to them, so it doesn't really matter. That's why I didn't have anything transparent in this actual video portion. So PNG sequence, RGB plus alpha, it's fine if I don't have a transparency, so I'm just gonna leave it on RGB plus alpha. Press okay. I'll put this to a portion. I already have still, <laughs> fuck this, fuck you. Uh, that was when I was trying to figure out something when it comes to, um, whatchamacallit. When I was trying to figure out how to do something like two days ago or something like that, it was bugging the hell out of me because when I was talking about in the beginning of the video, making sure your uh, size of your document is good, yeah, that's how frustrated I was. So that's what you don't want to do. Um, I made a new folder wherever I call it a tutorial and just press save. And when you want to render it out, I'm going to render it out right now for you guys as well. It's going to be fairly quick, fairly simple. It's going to render out those little frames. And what I'm going to do now is just jump right back into Photoshop really quickly to show you guys how to go ahead and make sure you render it out as a gift and all that cool stuff. So once this renders out, throw this inside Photoshop and I'll show you guys. All right, guys. So now back inside Photoshop. So what I want to go ahead and do is I have my folder here, right? Open with all those little PNG GIFs that it actually sends you guys or uh, puts in the folder for you guys. Because it's basically saying, hey, this is all PNGs, but it's also a kind of like a GIF. What? English? Um, it's just pictures that you guys wanted out. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and take one of them right at the beginning, the zero, zero, zero one. I'm going to just take this, drag this up to the portion of your actual Photoshop in this little gray area here. And it'll open up right here. This is what you guys want to do is just simply because it will help you guys with your actual document size. If you guys change it or whatever. It'll make sure it keeps the same as that document size, all that cool stuff. And that's what you guys want to make sure you guys end up doing is you make a nice little new tab with the correct document size by just dragging the layer there, all that cool stuff. So. I'm gonna go to Windows. I'm gonna to go to where it says timeline here, right? I'm gonna just kind of open up my timeline. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead now and go to where it says image. Uh, no, it's layer. It's video layer. Then it's new video layer from file. So then what you're gonna do is gonna search for your file again. So it's in my desktop. It's in my what should I call it? Where is it? Hmm. Desktop. Oh, I see it right there. Add. Fuck this. Fuck you. Tutorial live gif and what i'm going to do is just simply click on this first one here and press open it'll find all the other ones for you guys you can see now it's only 10 sec or uh, 12 seconds here so you can do is you can delete this first layer that you just did that's just like a, a mock-up for the actual um document size so you can see it's all in here all nice and cool and it goes away and it'll repeat itself when you guys go to where it says your renders so you want to hold Control, alt shift s and or you can go to where it says file export save for web and what you want to do, you just change it, your preset over here to uh, PNG 24. You want to change it to where it says GIF. Now, when it changes to GIF, it's going to take a little bit uh, to load for a second. Once it loads, you want to make sure that you have on the right-hand side here, 
whenever it loads. We're just gonna wait for that to load. Okay, cool. Almost done. I mean, during this time, if you guys are not, if you guys haven't liked the video yet, maybe you guys should do so. But I want to make sure your uh, color is on 256, not 128, 256, right? You want to make sure your dither is anywhere above 75%. Uh, what dither basically is, is kind of saying if you had this at zero, it'll look really, really fuzzy. If you put your dither up from like 75 above, you get a little bit more focused and or better colors uh, meshing well. Um, otherwise, also putting your dither all the way to 100% is gonna make your gift size a little more bigger. Uh, PNG, uh, excuse me, size what your PNG, so oh my god, size for your gifts in Twitter, I think the maximum is 15 megabytes. We're out currently at 500 um, kilobytes, so that's perfectly fine. So if I wanted to, I can say 88 dither, right? Which is my other go to. I have 75, I have 88, and I have 100. So those are like my sequences. Um, I'm gonna say 88 dither is pretty good. See how it goes up a little bit. And also it looks really a little, a little look a little more sharper in the actual preview um you'll be able, you'll definitely be able to see if you had zero let me just show you on zero really quickly zero so just so you guys know right if i put it on zero you'll see when it loads um uh, you can't tell too much because we're on a like a kind of a stagnant screen but trust me on it i'll say 88 is pretty good okay 88 let that load cool now that it's loading you want to make sure your looping options are on forever not once you simply press save and you save it where you want to save it to and then you're pretty much all good to go what do you want to do is when you tweet it out on twitter do you want to just simply click on um add a file you add your gift and then you simply tweet out how you want to go live and that's basically how you create a nice little gift and or live sort of like now section for your um twitch youtube mixer whatever you guys do it on but i'm basically done for today's video here today hope you guys enjoyed as uh, enjoyed as always um yeah with that being said i'm gonna go to the gym and just go do things that you guys need to go do right um with that being said though as well one more time if you guys haven't subscribed already you guys should totally subscribe we're really really close i know i can feel i can taste it i just want the plaque i just want the plaque before i end up moving like right there like how sick come on like oh my god just please give it to me um Okay, I'm done. There we go. That's looks. I, like, I really do like how this one came out more than I did my actual uh, my uh, my original one. I I think I like this one a little more. A little more. Okay. All right. Told you guys later. Since we're out, don't forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love. Uh, enjoy. Peace.